and welcome back to Liz Sews. So one of my sort of channel resolutions for the new year was to do more videos involving pattern fitting. And so along those lines, I want to take you through a couple of episodes on this of how I'm gonna go about fitting this new pattern. So this is the Diamond Bustier pattern from Pinup Girls, which came out this month, the month of June. And so I've sewn it up as, as the pattern is, right? I haven't made any changes to it other than, you know, selecting my size. And uh, having sewn it up, there are a couple of things on here that I immediately I know that I want to change. So the first thing I want to change is this this area. I'm seeing a lot of pooling of fabric under here. And also when I'm wearing the bra, the wires are starting to tilt outward a little bit. And I think a part of that is because the front band has too much fabric in it. This, this cradle area has too much fabric and it's just letting that wire sort of go wherever it wants instead of holding it firmly in place. Uh, I do think that these look pretty good in terms of size. If anything, I might need them to be a little bit wider horizontally and a little shorter vertically, but I think what I'm gonna do is make some alterations to the frame and the back band, try those up, and then, then look at the cups at later date. Uh, one thing I might do just as a style stylistic change, it won't necessarily change how these cups are sized, is I might sort of cut down the coverage here in the front, maybe make this neckline a little bit lower. And then a lot of my problems are also in the back of the band here. So you can see as the bra is laying down, this back band is drafted so it starts going up in my back. And this is exactly how it looks on my body, it is parallel in the front and then scooping upwards in the back. And it's not that it doesn't, well, it doesn't fit, it's too wide. Um, but other than that, it's it's scooping upwards in the back also because that's the way that the pattern is drafted. So I wanna to try to take a look at that. And then another thing that's worrisome to me in the back is just this section of hook and eye here. So you can see from the technical drawings, they have a picture and it's supposed to be a three by three hook and eye. And that is also what's indicated on the materials list on the back of the, the pattern as well. It says a three by three hook and eye. However, a three by three hook and eye is about two and a quarter inches tall. So it only comes up to this high and the way that the back band is drafted is four inches tall. So there's no way that this can accommodate a three by three hook and eye and I don't know what they've done. It's almost as if they have different versions and what they released does not match the picture here. So what I've used is a five high uh, and even that's just the largest one that I had at the time. And even with the five high, you can see here that I've had to gather up in the back because this was even wider than that. I have made a couple long line bras with a three by three hook and eye. I don't think it offers me enough support in the back. I think I need the higher one. So I think when I redraft this back panel, I wanna make it so that it accommodates a taller hook and eye and I wanna give it a U-back strap attachment instead of T. That's just my preference for how straps are attached to the back. Uh, and then I also wanna fix this, this problem of it hiking upwards. I wanna make sure that it's gonna rest parallel to my body along the bottom. And then the last thing I sort of wanna look at is the width of the bridge right here. I think this bridge is too narrow. I do not have the wires in the bra right now. Yeah, so with the wires in, you can see where I'm getting all of this pooling of fabric sitting here along the, the, the front cradle and also in the bridge here. When it's worn, it doesn't pool as much. Um, when it's worn, it sort of like stretches itself out like this, but I am still getting excess fabric underneath the wire line, which is letting them sort of poke outwards from the bottom. So I think the plan of attack today is to redraft the frame in the back band and maybe lower the coverage on the top of the cup here. And then once I've done all those changes, I'm gonna make this bra again with all the changes. Just to, It's another tester bra just to see how it fits. So this is a good example that like, even as an experienced bra maker, I don't get the bra right on the first time around. It typically takes me one or two times 
maybe three times through a pattern before I get it the way I like it. And then once I have it set, then I can go ahead and, and start getting creative and, and pick this out as a pattern that I know that already fits me if this is a sort of bra that I wanna make. I always try to fit the frame, the cradle, the back band first, and then I worry about the cups later because you really aren't going to be able to tell how these cups are fitting without, without having a band that's fitting properly first. So that's my plan of attack. Let's get started on making those changes. This frame, I don't think there's any way to sort of reconcile this for myself and make it work. So I think I'm just going to redraft the front frame completely. And then just because I think in order for me to get this pulled back in where I need it to be, it's going to require just a lot, a lot, a lot of, of manipulation. It's just, it's easier to just draft it from scratch. So what I'm going to start out with is my actual wire itself. And I'm going to trace the wire or just rather the interior of the wire. And I also want to mark where it's starting and endpoints are. So I have something that looks like that. So the first thing, I'm, I'm gonna draft it and then I'm gonna add seam allowances in later. But we know that we want to add some wire play, which is not the same as seam allowance. So I want to add a quarter of an inch wire play on both ends. And I want to add wire spring just to one side of my wire because this one, the current frame like, has wire spring at both sides and I just don't love that. So I wanna add just wire spring to the outer edge and I wanna do it at like 15 centimeters, which is just over a half of an inch. So let's say half an inch plus a little extra. And I want it to hit there. And then I am going to take a curved ruler and connect that portion back in to my wire as the wire goes towards the bottom of the bra. Okay, so this one I'm not using anymore. I'm gonna be using that, that splayed out version. So if I put my wire on here, make sure yep that looks pretty good actually that gives me a lot a lot of wire play I don't need that much so I think we can end we can end that one a little lower okay first I want to do the width of my center bridge so the width of my bridge in the original pattern does look a little bit too small to me. I don't want to copy the original bridge width here, which theirs is, looks like a quarter of an inch. I think that I want three eighths of an inch. So this distance is three eighths, but it's gonna be cut on the fold. So it's actually gonna be six eighths of an inch of usable real estate in between. Six, eight, five, six. Actually, I think I could go more than that. I'm gonna go half of an inch. So I got half of an inch there, and then I am going to measure down. I do like the height of this because it is hitting sort of right at my natural waist. So I'm gonna measure from the seam line to the bottom on this guy, and I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches. So I want to transfer that over here and come down seven inches. So now we need to do some math. So on the front side of my body, my, my under bust measurement is, we said 33.5. Let's assume that that's split evenly front to back. I have no reason to think it isn't. So I'm gonna divide that by two, 16.75. So the under R are the my under bust is 16.75 in the front, and because we are gonna be cutting this on the fold, I'm gonna divide that by two again, 
and I get 8.375, which is 8 and 3 eighths. So I need this distance to be 8 and 3 eighths from the bridge, and that will be right underneath the, the bust line or where the wire sits. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's where I want it there. And then for my waist, my waist is 30 inches. And I'm going to say the front is equal to the back. So you get 15 inches. And then divide that by two, you get seven and a half inches at the waist. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half. So now I can see, now that I have uh, a quarter of my waist measured here, and then a quarter of my under bust measured here, it gives me two points that I can now connect in a line. And bring all the way up the side there. And I can also finish out my waistline here. And I want to go perpendicular or 98 degree angle to that center front. Okay, so like that. And then the last thing I can do is just connect up top here because I know where this line is and I know where I want my wire to end. I'm just going to draw another vertical line there, or sorry, a horizontal line there. So that's going to be my frame, and you can see it looks quite different than the frame that is in the pattern or included in the pattern, but it should still be the same height, and it is. This is going to be different because I have definitely changed this angle here, but I think that should be okay. I actually don't like how this looks. I'm going to angle this down a little bit more. Like that. So the center front I'm going to cut on a fold. This is going to have the one and a half inch elastic that just gets applied on top of it so I don't have to worry about any seam allowances there. I do need a quarter of an inch seam allowance on this side where it attaches to the back band. And I need a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the top of my bridge. Like that. And I'm gonna need a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the wire line. I do have a lot of like extra lines, so sometimes it could be helpful if you just change the color of your pen from your wire trace to where you actually want the wire to be once it's splayed out. That way it's easier to keep them straight. Okay, so here is the finished piece that I want to go ahead and make my next long line bra out of. So I've just gone in and cleaned this up a little bit. I did add an extra, I realized that I, this, the elastic that comes up on the upper arm piece here is going to be 3 eighths of an inch. So I did make that seam allowance 3 eighths of an inch instead of a quarter. Um, basically I've just cleaned everything up. So I do have still a quarter of an inch on the side seam, uh, this section cut on the fold, no seam allowance here and then the quarter of an inch for the wire itself. If you don't want to draft a whole frame like this for yourself, another option that you could do is that uh, I have a tutorial on my channel already of how to uh, turn a regular bra into a long line bra. So if you've done that already and you really like how that works for you and it's using the same wire size, you can go ahead and just switch that frame out. So if I look, this is the frame that I had done based off of the black beauty bra. 
And if I line these up, you can see that, yeah, these are looking very similar. It looks like the only difference is the Black Beauty frame sort of nips in at the waist a little bit more for me. But that's a good way of if you just want to skip having to like draft it all from scratch yourself um, using one that you already have. As long as the wire size is the same, so this is drafted, this was based off of a 40 wire, and this is based off of a 40 wire so I can use this frame with these cups and theoretically it should work together because they're made for the same length wire. So now I'm going to start looking at the back band of the bra. So in order to start drafting the back band I need to know uh, the distance of this seam right here without my seam allowances. So I'm going to measure from this corner point there to the bottom. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a quarter. So I know that I need my back band to be seven and a quarter long on that side seam. And in terms of distance, so I had made a 34 band last time and that looked too big. So I'm gonna go with a 32 this time. So I'm just going to align the, the seam allowance. So that in this case, that's this dotted line up right here. And I'm just doing this to get a general idea of how long my band should be. So I'm gonna go with 32 and I'm gonna make this line longer than I need it to be. So there's the general outline of my bra back band. And now I wanna think about how it comes out. So the original back band definitely scoops up in the back and I don't like that. So if I look at it to connect to my front, I actually think that if this comes downwards like this, sort of like as a downward hike, that should work out because I do still have my wire spring in here, so it's going to curve up a little bit, but it looks like this downward angle will settle itself out to be a straight line. So I'm gonna go with that. So I'm just gonna draw perpendicular or 90 degrees out from my balance line over here, which is where it connects to the front of the bra connect those two lines together. So it's gonna be the bottom of my band. And typically I like the top of my band to sort of slope down slightly. And I think I'm also gonna turn this into, let's see, do I want this to be a three by three or do I wanna continue using these longer ones? I think I'm more likely to have three by threes in my stash. I'm not convinced that this one will give enough support. I think I want to make it taller. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is seven. I think that's a pretty big, good height. So if I do there and mark at the top here, let's say that that's the height that I want my back band to be. So I could either, if I wanted to continue with a T-strap attachment, that is the straps that sort of just connect to the here at a at a 90 degree angle all i would need to do is connect this point to this point however not my preferred strap attach method i really do like the u back a little bit better so i think what i'm going to do is move this up maybe one and a half inches and then connect like that And then to make it a U strap attachment, all I need to do, and this scoop is just sort of like artistic license. I'm just trying to get one that I think looks relatively good. I do like coming out of here at sort of a 90 degree angle, just because I think that makes it, I like coming out here at a 90 degree angle because it makes it easier to put the strap in. And then when I curve up like this, I do try to, 
come to a 90 degree or close to a 90 degree angle as I attack the upper edge of the bra as well so that the straps will be laying straight. So I think that's all I need to do for my back band, right? I have the width. This should be giving me that downward hike. I have a U strap attachment. So I just need to add my seam allowances in. And so for this one, the upper band elastic is gonna be 3 8 of an inch. So I'm gonna add my 3 8 of an inch seam allowance this way. And a quarter of an inch on this side where it attaches to the front of the bra. And then I don't need seam allowance on the bottom and I don't need seam allowance on the hook and eye and I don't need seam allowance on the scoop. So that should be it. So I think the last thing that I want to do before I sew up this tester is just to alter, um, I think I'm gonna alter these upper cup pieces just a little to give me less coverage on the upper cup. So this one is a pretty easy alteration. I'm not gonna have to redraft like I've had to do for the other pieces. So I think what all I'm gonna do is maintain the wire line and the cross cup seam here. And I think I'm just gonna scoop this down a little bit more so it gets more dramatic. So that's gonna be the only changes I'm making to the upper cup piece. I'm just removing some of this fabric right here to give me a more dramatic scoop. So now that I've changed the frame, the upper cup, and the back band, I'm going to sew up a bra with these new pattern pieces to see how it looks and then see if there's any more additional changes that I need to make. So the next time that we revisit this pattern series, um, I will have a second bra made up with these changes. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.